guys and welcome back to uh, another episode. So uh, tonight I'll be talking a little bit about the um, engine positioning and the engine mount side of things. So far I've probably had the engine in and out maybe about six times. Uh, as you can see it's back out again. Um, so yeah in and out, in and out. It's always been, uh, it's been a bit of a ball ache but versus getting it wrong um it's been it's been worth it so engine bay wise uh we're at the point where finished all the welding um I'll tell you a little bit about the engine mount side of things you can see there's only one left in there at the minute which is solid to the car see th this is actually uh the gearbox mount was actually made to bolt on in the end so you'll see how the engine mounts are actually raised upwards. I've had to build a platform to, uh, to, to sit it up. So the initial idea was to, it's, it's the same this side as well. So the initial idea was to um, use the uh, K-swap mounts. Uh, I was hoping that they would bolt onto the engine and pretty much just tell me exactly where they needed welding, um, just when you had it in the in the engine bay. But as you can see, they were quite far out. So that's the reason why I had to raise it up, what is it, probably about 15, 20 mil. And that just basically meant that um, we could get these to about the right height. So the main cam belt side mount, Pretty self explanatory just slot straight into there and then that just uh, bolts straight onto the engine there. So here's a gearbox mount. This came with a case swap kit which obviously di directly fits onto the gearbox quite nicely. Um, and then it came with this bracket which looked nothing like this originally. Uh, chop it up and then extend this out because the, the engine wanted to fit further towards the cam belt side for the drive shaft so uh, so we use little bits of it uh, it bolts on uh, here here uh, there and there um, so it'll, uh, that'll bolt straight into the shell so this is the rear mount this one here uh, which we've finished up with little poly bush that goes into into here um, and then that will go into the rear subframe. So this is basically a, a cannibalized uh, OEM Honda mount. So it's the EP3 mount, but basically it had all this slot attached to it. So all I've basically done is, is cut it all out just so I can get the clearance for the rear subframe. The EP3 has quite like a shallow rear subframe it's because it houses the mount and they're as standard and the exhaust passes between the rear subframe and the uh, bulkhead. So this was the K-Swap um, engine mount, which actually came with the engine mount kit, which I thought would be fairly usable, but um, this length here was was far too much, so, and plus none of the fucking holes lined up either, so it was uh, just, just scrap that. Um, so I decided to go with the OEM mount because at least I know it fits perfectly. It goes into the gearbox here and here with two M12s and then it also hooks around the top of the gearbox here with another M12. So the rear mount on the rear subframe um, that, that goes into. So I've just made a 5mm plate which surrounds the whole Rear subframe. You see, it's brace there. It's also brace around the around the around the back as well. Um, yeah, nice and easy. I've also got rid of a sliver of this. Um, so I've, I've probably taken about ten mil out of, well, maybe more fifteen mil out of all this, just for the fact that that's exactly where the manifold needs to go. So I'm trying to put a quite a big manifold on it because the, the engines make more power um, with a, a much bigger exhaust so so I'll be quite tight for space anyway so I thought it's probably worth to grab 
another 15 mil or whatever if you can and then this is for the uh, the oil filter so the front engine mount i thought was going to be really easy this is the standard ep3 one the standard mount is pretty pretty diabolical really it's i mean you see this one's actually split um, there's not much support to it at all so uh, so i looked into aftermarket options and uh, innovate do a an aftermarket one and it's, it's about 130 quid so um so i decided to to have a go at making my own just go straight into the into the front subframe which we've got there So after all the messing with the engine in and out so many times, we uh, ended up with a, a result in the fact that we've got the engine as far down as it'll go, but without kind of um, protruding further, further than the front subframe. Getting the engine level in the bay was obviously the, the the number one priority that you'd look at so uh, so so that was that was achieved uh, obviously first firstly making sure that it's actually sat square on the axle stands as well um so we made sure that the actual shell was sitting sitting straight first of all to get that set and then got the uh, engine um level in the bay uh, from 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 all angles, so uh, so that so that was achieved quite nicely. Drive shaft angles, obviously important. Um, I was always under the impression originally that that the straighter the better, but um, but I've since told that you you best to have some angle in there just to get rid of vibration. So um, so so yeah, that this. I mean, naturally, you are kind of restricted to how the engine would actually physically fit in the bay without. If you didn't have a rear subframe there, for instance, then you could put it loads further back. But realistically, it's only going to sit where it wants to sit. So it ended up in a position where the drive shaft angles were obviously perfect either side. Um, but yeah, they they do um, they do face back ever so slightly, which I've been told is is perfectly fine. Got to the point with that full droop on the suspension. Um, had 20 mil plunge in the drive shafts each side so I got that pretty much cock on and then there was there's about seven to ten mil um plunge when the cars are fully compressed so um it's it's even both sides so it's it's the best that it can be so um so I guess obviously that that'll, that'll be affected by uh, how low you run it which this will be too low because it's on it's on a set of rally shocks so it's, it's, it's going to sit fairly uh, probably similar to standard ride height i would think um but yeah pretty pleased we've got the pedal box all uh well the plates all in the cylinders fit perfectly um and the pedals look about right um look about right feel about right and more importantly the actual uh, steering column can uh, can actually make its way through. That's why there's a little bit more of a gap between the um, throttle pedal and the brake. Okay, so the shifter um, I originally decided that I was going to put the base plate under the car and then mount the shifter on top of it. However, um, I was having trouble getting it all under the console. So the plan now is to, I'm gonna chop the console just under here um, so that it's got enough room for all that crap for the uh, actual cables. So um, steel plate, stick that under there um, and then base plate will go down so we're all bolted down the um, bottom bottom half of the bracket. The uh, the main base mount is there, um, and then we've got the steel panel underneath. So that's three mil thick with six M8s. So the console trimmed, um, well trimmed, absolutely butchered to uh, to fit. 
Here are the cables. So as I say, these are Integra Type R, so this clean side, so obviously this sits inside the car. So nice and easy, and you've got three locations, so you can actually adjust the throw slightly. You can see adjust this up and down. It's, it's pretty well there. So it's, you're getting all of the gears pretty nicely. Um, quite short. Yeah, pretty pleased with that. That's an easy job, really. So thanks again and, and tune in for the next one. I, I don't get that much time out here, so um, so any updates that I, that I get is infrequent, to say the least. But but yeah, appreciate you um, you watching anyway. The the likes are increasing both on Facebook and YouTube. So so happy with that. So yeah, see you again. Thanks a lot.